Right. Ed Carr, thank you for joining us on Croft TV. Here it's always a pleasure. <laughs> Cheers, Justin. Yering Station in Yarra Valley, oh, live from Landmark Victoria. Yeah. It's stunning. And Ed, you just uh, showed 14 international guests a bit of uh, Australian sparkling. Yeah, that was actually great. It's, um, a bit of work had gone into sort of scanning for styles, and but uh, the quality was just fantastic. I think, you know, last five years or so, it's really come of age. and. Um, just settling into regionality, but also house styles. Yeah, uh, I found that interesting. You mentioned house styles because obviously it's something we hear, you know, champagne houses. Yeah. But in Australia, I've not heard the term until House of Arras. And yeah, I guess because the Australian premium sparkling industry is so young. Um, you know, like Pinot Noir and Chardonnay wasn't around till the 70s. It wasn't until the late 80s that sparkling wine really start, started to appear. You know, made from the classic varieties, and then if you age it five to ten years, you know, you've just lost a decade or two just instantly. So, yeah. we we really only at the most thirty years into a you know, into the development of these things. But I think it's come along so fast that it's um, there's some tremendous wines out there now. Yeah, and we're competing on a world stage in terms of quality now. Yeah, again, I come back to the fact, yeah, the last five years, these wines have really started to pitch. Like, we're putting wines in that tasting from 99, or 98 actually, through to, you know, to, to 2006 or seven was the youngest wines. So that's, that's tremendous because these styles just need the age to build the complexity and the depth. And, um, it just takes time. You can't you can't do it any faster. And I guess that's why they're so expensive as they get. Oh, they build. Yeah, there there's an investment. There's yeah. a vineyard investment. Then there's the fruit investment, the winemaking, the glass, and then just you've got you've just got to wait. And all that money is just sitting there stewing away yeah. until you can actually get it out onto the market. Which yeah, gives yeah. you time to save up for that bottle. <laughs> well, we'll crack it. This was one that um, really impressed us. Yeah, a little yeah. tip up from PJ. It was. Um, pouring as well. It's the Brown Brothers Patricia. It's a Pinot Shardy 05 vintage. Yeah. And are people drinking? Are people drinking bubbles, or is it still just a special occasion beverage? Um, it's still very much special occasion focused, and um, I personally believe it sort of suffers from that. In, yeah. In, in, in the sense that um, maybe it's a personal grief, but. You know, uh, people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people. Quite often, I call it a stand-up wine. Like a lot of time, people, you're socialising like this, and mm. you're, you're not really concentrating on the wine. And so, I guess that's why a lot of sparkling wine is brand orientated so strongly because they just put a label. That's fine. Yeah. Um, whereas a lot of other wine styles, if you're sitting down to a meal, and by the time you get to the red at the end of the night, you're, you know, you're really analysing them. Um, geeks there, like us. <laughs> there's a bit of a risk with fizz that because it is a celebration and an introductory wine, that there's other things happening. And I, yeah, you know, is that where it kind of stays in some people's minds? Well? Yeah, 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 I think so. Um, we need to start yeah, drinking I, it with food and and yeah. treating it like a wine, don't we? Yeah, I think we do. And um, Asian. Yeah, yeah. I think there's you know lots of opportunities there to. <laughs> Um, you know, take sparkling wine into more serious sort of categories. Not that I think it's great to have it as an introductory, fun celebration wine. Yeah. Uh, but we really need to open up that spectrum to get people thinking about it, maybe just a little bit more. Yeah. Ordering a bottle over lunch rather than a glass. <laughs> a glass. Is that right. a, well, talk us through this, Patricia, and maybe tell us what what sort of foods do we go with? Because I think that's the key. To... Foods. Foods are always tough for me, but this um, style. I really like the brand style. I've been impressed with what they've done for a long, long time, both their non-vintage and their vintage label. But to me, this is more that aldehydic, slightly sherified character. Yep. And it's got that fresh aldehyde on the nose, which is um, just lifts the nose, uh, adds to the com complexity, which is there from the yeast and the thyme on leaves and whatever. But the aldehyde sort of dries it off and makes it crisp. and. Um, as a cold, fresh wine, I just think that's been fantastic. We stay out here for two minutes longer, it's going to be bloody cold. Cold, <laughs> cold and fresh. Because in the, in the tasting, I got real marzipan bursting off the nose and quite nutty. Yeah. But um, yeah, sweetness, like you said, that sherry thing on the palate, but um, really lovely, just yeah, it, nutty, it, interesting. It is a rich, full wine, and I mm. think it, it shows its um, 
heritage. It's gone from a very good region, very good wine, wine making, and then just the patience for the for the age. Well, well speaking of patience for age, yep. so we um, yeah. got um, <laughs> one of yours, yeah. Ed, that you've obviously brought in. Yeah. Do you want to uh, give us a little opening of uh, no, bubbles okay. demos? <laughs> opening of bubbles demos. Okay. Well, this is the House of Arras Edcar Late Disgorged Chardonnay Pinot 1999. Is yeah. that the correct yeah. title? Yeah. That's Some of these, correct. they take a couple of lines yep. when you're writing about them. Okay. So here we go. Now, this is this is the duck's nuts. This is pretty well, I, fascinating. And, to me, what's been missing so much in the Australian sort of sparkling wine thing is age. I talk constantly about age. And um, I just think that you know, to build that complexity, put this down, just to, um, <laughs> just to get us equivalent to the global market. I yeah. mean, if you look at what our global competition is, it's the latest releases are 04s. Um, you know, so we've really got to think about the age of our wines if you want to compete in that style of complex, fine, aged wines. And, um, so your vintage Doms and your Bollingers and your oh, vintage yeah, Krugs? Yeah, yeah. Like vintage Champagnes, probably 04s are just starting to come out. Mm. Um, your Prestige Cuvées range from 02 to 98. Mm. Um, I, I, that just shows you that you know the value of ageing these wines on um, leaves. They just need to be Give if, it some time. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to be taken seriously at the price points that these wines are going to be, because as you pointed out, the you know, investment, the the investment in the age, then they they just need the age. But I think they're obviously going to move into price points yeah. that aren't normal for Aussie wine. So what's this worth um, on the shelf? On, on the shelf, about 190. Right. So it's right. It's putting itself right up yeah, there. Yeah. That's about sort of. What, Bollinger Dom was dear in the Bollinger. Well, Dom's about 250, right. two, so 242, 250. She's talking serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Winston and Churchill's around about the same. And But they're 98s, 99s. Yeah. Well, Dom's 2000, the last one. I yeah, think. I think so as well, yeah. Uh, this, I mean, so that's, so is, that the take, is that a take home message from the um, uh, lecture this morning that we need to give some time to our, our sparklings? Well, I think uh, I think it is for our press prestige cuvées. I think. Um, for we, the producers, yeah, they need to take yeah, the time. Yeah. What about the consumers? The consumers, it, it depends where we're trying to pitch. I mean, because of our diversity of climates and whatever, we can we can go sub ten dollars and produce faultless, nice, fruity, easy drinking wines, or we can push into the very cold climates and produce wines ten years old with all the age and com com complexity that takes them on to the global stage. I mean, this certainly starts smelling like, and you, you want to stop drawing comparisons as soon as we can, but I guess we're talking in the field of champagne, but it suddenly starts smelling like a, a vintage, really sexy, oh, funky, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, matchstick yeah. and nutty and oh, oysters and does, soy but, sauce and interesting, fascinating yeah. things. I mean, there's so many styles of champagne as well um, that, you know, I think where we need to be playing is just, um, we're just an alternative, but at the same quality level. Yeah. Not the same, just at the same quality level. Um, and much with, cooler if you if you bring a bottle for an anniversary <laughs> or something to bring out one of these rather than your stock standard Dom. You know, be original. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, do, you you could. I mean, do you do you do this overseas? Do you sort of pop this in lineups and see we, what people? We, we've done that a lot. You wouldn't pick. It. I mean, you wouldn't um, go. This is Australia. Would you? Uh, I, I mean, we're absolutely confident that this and a lot of other wines that we looked at in the tasting today could be put against any competition and hold their own at their price points at their ages and whatever so um, that's a very positive part, part of the industry now with that and I think people have become more focused on it and it, it's just starting to happen uh, which is great. And the champagne lovers out there just need to be aware that there's some Australian sparkling, not many, but a couple of them yep. that are putting out stuff like this. I mean, this is astonishing. It's so bright and fresh, and this is what I find fascinating. Ten years it's been sitting in the bottle on its, its yeast and leaves. Yeah, it? I think that's the true benchmark of exceptional sparkling wine. If you look at so all the classics, they're so old, but they're still so bright and fresh and lively, and um, that's, that's to me the key. They've still got a lovely green hue to them. And that's just release, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's not just released, I say yes, 
Uh, it's coming out in in October. Oh, sneaky peek! Hey. <laughs> it's on. So it's on cork now because we disgorged six six months before release to get yeah. some cork age. Yeah. But um, it'll be labelled for release in October. Well, wow. Well, it's bloody good. Yeah, thank and you so much. Ed, thanks for the masterclass. was fascinating. Oh, yeah, you really And um, was. thanks yeah, for having a little taste of this. We'll keep the bottle if that's all I'm with you because <laughs> no, you've got plenty so of them. Yeah. And right. get yourselves, have a look yeah, at Australian yeah, Sparkling. Yeah. Well, I won't get that on the plane home. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back soon, folks. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers man. That's good.